prepare for the introduction. Uh, our company is based in Moscow, Russia. We have started over 20 years ago. And actually, our first commercial product was about password cracking. It was a cracker for zipper hives. Uh, we have done it for, for ourselves, just, just because we forgot our own password. And then we decided to try to start to sell it. And after about two weeks, we got the first order from the <laughs> FBI. And we did decided that that, that could be a good idea to develop such kind of software. And since then, we have developed the, the full range of password cracking software and selling it to law enforcement all over the world. Uh, but today, I'm going to, to talk about something different. Uh, about six or seven years ago, we started another dire direction in our company related to mobile and cloud forensics. Uh, uh, from, from our customers uh, that are uh, working for mostly for law enforcement, uh, we, um, we learned that they are much more interested in breaking the encryption and getting data from mobile devices and from the cloud. It's usually much more, much more interesting data there. Um, so uh, we, have, we have started. Um, uh, our first product about mobile forensics uh, was uh, for breaking passwords, <laughs> also for iTunes backup, and that, that was the first on the market. And after that, uh, later, we, we started to explore the diff different clouds. Started also with Apple iCloud, then we um, made a product for Google and was really surprised how many information is collected there, and not all of them can be uh, download it with uh, Google Tech Out. Um, uh, so for for today, we'll talk about the uh, 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 iCloud uh, security, and uh, there were uh, really interesting tools earlier today and uh, yesterday about the authentication, about access, about two-factor authentication. Uh, but I think a couple of things were, were missing, and they're really important. How secure your data is actually in the cloud? Uh, what if someone get a physical access to that data, to the servers? And uh, what uh, someone, uh, whether it is a hacker or someone working for law enforcement, can get from your cloud or any other cloud account if they have proper credentials? What if they have your password? And do they really need the second factor? What if they have both? What information can be accessed and whatnot? Uh, we, we, we know that there is quite a lot of data uh, in, in, in the cloud um, available, and we'll check how, how secure it is. Here is a kind of timeline related to, to Apple iOS and, um, uh, and iCloud. iCloud appeared first time about seven years ago with uh, iOS 5, and uh, uh, the next year we released the software to download iCloud backups. But I, but, that was actually my idea. I came to the developer and said, why not to try to download iCloud backups? He said, for what? You can always restore the uh, backup to the, to the actual device. But we still decided that it might be really interesting and useful for people and for, for usual regular customers and for law enforcement as well. Then we realized a lot of very interesting things, how the data is stored, how it is encrypted, uh, we learned that three last backups uh, are stored in the cloud and that they're incremented and how they're split it, uh, by chunks and every chunk is, is, is encrypted and what actual physical servers uh, they're stored on. Uh, next year, the iCloud keychain was introduced by Apple. We, uh, well, uh, well uh, almost immediately we tried to, to get access to it, but it was really much harder than getting access to the uh, to like cloud backups and to other data. It was successful, but only at several years later. Uh, only in 2014, uh, to two-step verification has been introduced by Apple. And at that time, uh, it was protecting only, only your Apple purchases at the Apple Store for the, for the software and for music. And uh, 2SV didn't protect iCloud backups. And you know what happened next? You probably remember that in August uh, 2014, Celebgate, when the private pictures of uh, over the 100 celebrities were leaked and they were taken from, from their iCloud accounts. And two years later, we realized that uh, 
that several persons used our software to do that. I don't know, should we be proud of that or not? Uh, but anyway, that happened. And there's the same, uh, the same year, and, and probably in the same month, the, the iCloud account of Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev was also cracked. We, we never know who did that, uh, who did that, and who actually, uh, what software has been used, but anyway. So it is a huge security risk. But soon after that, Apple uh, introduced the uh, 2SV for iCloud account, uh, for, for iCloud backups as well. And a bit later, um, uh, iOS 8.1 has been released with the iCloud photo library. I have uh, decided to include that item there because that's, that, that means that by default, all your pictures made um, uh, with your iPhone immediately go to the, uh, to the iCloud even if your iCloud backups are not enabled. Of course, you, you can disable that option too. Uh, with iOS 9, two-step two verification has been changed to two-factor authentication. And for some time, for, for about two years, I think, they coexisted. Uh, and, and later, Apple allowed only to enable 2FA, but not, not 2SV. And I should say that 2, 2FA is much more secure. By default, the second factor is, uh, is being sent not by SMS, which is not secure, but with a push notification and also if someone trying to access your iCloud account, you get the notification on all your trusted devices immediately at the same second, including the actual location of the computer of iOS device this account has been accessed to. And there were also other security measures. And so Apple started to push aggressively the 2FA, and it was really a good idea always when, when installing the setting up the new iPhone or transferring from, from backup or installing the new version, you always get a warning that uh, it is highly recommended to, uh, to, to FA. And uh, uh, also the same year with iOS 11, the health data is started to sync between the devices and the iCloud. Uh, I don't remember, unfortunately, is it, is it enabled by, de by default or not? I think it is disabled by default, but, but many, many people enable because it is really convenient and allows you to sync across devices. Uh, with iOS uh, 11.4, uh, messages including iMessage and SMS also going to, to the cloud. It was actually promised to release it with iOS 11. But I don't know the reason for, for delays. It was in first three beta versions of iOS 11. Then this just disappeared and then appeared again in some later versions, in also in beta. And uh, it is actually only in iOS 11.4 release. And it is still not working really stable. There are, there are still a lot of bugs uh, syncing the messages across devices. And with iOS 12, um, now, there is a nice feature called screen time. It is enabled by default, and a lot of data is collected on the iPhone, and it, is, can, it, it can be also synced uh, across devices through the iCloud. <coughs> uh, the, the, this year, Apple has made it several nice moves, improving the, the security. I also mentioned the messages and screen time. And I should know that those two features uh, I mean, not the, the, the fish that sell the syncing that data with the cloud is only possible if you enable 2FA because it, Apple probably decided that it, that's, uh, it's, it's much more secure and that's a uh, right move. Also, the, some changes have been made to authentication tokens. Uh, so some time ago, we realized how to access iCloud accounts using just the tokens extracted from the uh, proper authenticated uh, iOS device from Mac or Windows computer. And so, uh, so getting the data even if you don't have the password and even without that uh, second factor, uh, it is now much harder. The tokens are now tied to the computer. And whereas we are now looking for a workaround and uh, really close uh, to that. And for the combination of iOS 11.2 and later versions and two-factor authentication, for now, we cannot download iCloud backups anymore, even if we have the iCloud password and a second factor and anything else what, it, what is needed. So there are some checks that, that are being done by the iCloud service that, 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 that actually uh, verify that the downloading process has been 
uh, initiated from the actual iOS device, but not from the computer. We'll also fi uh, find a workaround. We're also really close to that. Uh, okay, to, to understand how secure your data, first uh, have a look at what data is actually stored in the cloud. And, and it's not a very easy uh, question, as, as you might think. The first thing to try is just to go to iCloud settings on your iPhone. There are quite a lot of buttons, and with uh, every new iOS version, you, you get a couple of new ones. Uh, but actually, not all the categories are listed there. For example, try to find an option to disable call log syncing with the cloud. We have found that maybe about a year and a half ago, we have contacted several several journalists about that. Hey, see that Apple doesn't say that, and there is no option to disable. But once you enable the iCloud in general, you immediately get your uh, all your incoming and outgoing calls, the uh, metadata coming to the to the cloud. Uh, why is that? Uh, the the day later, I have received uh, uh, the call on my mobile phone from Apple, and there were two people from Apple on the line, one from marketing uh, department, I think, and the second one from the security department. I have explained in details uh, what we have found, and also I even mentioned that this is uh, not about the continuity feature, uh, about ac accepting the incoming call on the other device. This is absolutely not, and not related. You can disable continuity and still all your uh, call logs will go to the cloud. Uh, the next day, Apple uh, issued the official statement explaining that this is only for user convenience and this is only about the um, continued feature. Uh, so we had to publish the blog, um, a blog article about that. Uh, some options actually require the iCloud keychain to, to be enabled to, in order to work. And it is also not obvious what is really under the iCloud drive. And in fact, there is a lot of uh, third-party application data. There is a nice cloud kit available from, from Apple. You can use the iCloud for storage and also for syncing your data. And many applications can create their own backups in, on the iCloud drive. Uh, there is an iCloud like an add-on in, in both Windows and Marcos, and you can see some files, but mostly documents on the iCloud drive, but not the third-party application data, actually. You actually, you don't have an idea what is stored there. Checklist number two, it's, it's a very short and simple one. You can go just to iCloud.com and see what categories are there, and you will not see much. Contacts, calendars, the mail, anybody is using iCloud mail? I don't think so. Notes and, and things like that. Not too much. Uh, that The next thing is much better. That's a privacy.apple.com site. It first appeared and has been seriously improved with the uh, new European law GDPR. And you actually, all the companies have been forced to, to allow users to see what data is available on them and allowing you also to correct the data, to delete the data, and so on. First, it was introduced only in, in Europe. Then it was extended to United States and Canada. And about two weeks ago, it's, uh, it, it, it's now also available in Russia and about 10 other countries, including Mexico, someone in Asia, and so on. I don't have an idea about China, probably not. The interesting thing that is backups are this is your personal data, but backups are not available through that, that, that site. And the most interesting data is hidden under the item other data. It's actually about the, uh, the iCloud. <coughs> Sorry. OK, um, so anyone, if you are happy enough to live in the country where that site is available, you can log on pass to factor authentication, or without TFA, you'll probably have to answer the security questions. And then you put the checkboxes near the categories you want to get, and then wait exactly one week. I also don't know why is that, even if there is no such uh, uh, much data there. Apple is, uh, first I thought that Apple is preparing the data for about a week, but then I got the, the email from Apple explaining that 
uh, taking a week for checking, well, that I'm the legal owner of the data. How, the, how they do that, I have no idea. But I still had to wait. And I check list number four. It's also very interesting. It is available on the Apple website. It's under the uh, government in information request. And Apple des describes, but not in a very high detail, what they can do and what, what data they can provide for, for, for the given iCloud account. Uh, you, well, you, you have to, look, to work for law enforcement, of course, to, to be able to send such a request. And, um, uh, but it, it's actually a lot. And some of that data is not available by uh, other means. But probably it's about the same what is available under the GDPR including backups. And there is also some metadata about the uh, FaceTime calls. So once we, we, we analyzed all that four items and we are, we are still exploring, uh, we are also uh, checking the, the data being transferred between Apple devices and the Apple iCloud and to see the request there. It was not really easy to implement when the middle attack and uh, because the certificates are pinned to the device, we were able to, to fool that uh, for the jailbroken devices only. And uh, even with a jailbreak for iOS, uh, iOS 11, it was really hard. But, but then we realized that some extra data is also being transferred. Yes, iCloud syncs a lot of data. Uh, that's not only about backups and not only about the applications that use them, uh, the iCloud. And this is probably like Google did that for many years, and then Android, they still don't have complete uh, device backups in the Google Cloud, but they were always syncing. And you don't have, when you change the Android device to the, uh, to the new one, you don't need to restore it from the backup. You just connect it to your Google account, and, and by syncing, you get everything back on, on your device. Uh, Apple, Apple started with the with other idea, with complete iCloud backups, and only then started to sync more and more data with the cloud, uh, especially like several categories like uh, notes. I start to write notes on the iPhone and continue on, the, on my Mac, and there is a health data yes, synced, and photos and videos, and passwords. And pay attention to the last item, that's a file world to recovery token. If you have selected that option, and I think it is enabled by default, then the recovery token for your Mac file wall drive will be also stored in the cloud. That's not the recovery key that you can enter manually, and it, it's not easy to decrypt uh, backup with that token. You will have to use to third party software, but it is still possible, and that key is, is stored in the cloud. So anyone with a proper uh, credential will will be able to get um, most of that data. I know that many people disable the iCloud backups, but they still have most of the uh, iCloud-related categories enabled. Uh, so uh, let's move to protection and to encryption. There is an article on the Apple website on the uh, knowledge base. And I said that 128-bit uh, S encryption is being used. And some data uh, use so-called end-to-end encrypted data, such as uh, like categories. Um, uh, these are home data, health, iCloud keychain, payments information, your credit cards. Uh, Siri information, Siri actually works, it seems to work only one way. We, we, we know that the data is there, but we weren't able to, to get it so far. And those categories use strong encryption. What does that actually mean uh, if, if all the data is already encrypted? Why there is a reason to encrypt it the stronger? Let's, let's also realize. Uh, the first thing that protects your iCloud data is obviously the... Um, Apple ID uh, password, and then the two-factor two authentication. 2SV is actually uh, not available anymore. It is still being used on some older devices, but you, you will be able to enable it on the newer, newer ones. Uh, uh, the problem is also pay attention to the last item. The encryption key is stored alongside with the data. That's like leaving the key uh, right, right near the door. Uh, that's physically, the location is not exactly the same. The actual data is 
uh, stored in the cloud, is located on different servers, actually all over the world. But the keys for that data are stored only uh, at Apple in Cupertino at their data centers. But uh, once you have the proper credentials, the Apple ID and password and second factor is needed, you get both. For every chunk of data, you get you, you send the first request, please give me the data, then next file. You get the URL, download it, and then the second request, like, please give me the key for it, the location of the key. And so with the next step, you get the key. Then you'll have to unwrap it and to apply to, to decrypt all those chunks, to compile all those chunks into, into actual files. So that's a long and not very easy process, but still, the encryption key is stored alongside uh, with, with the data. At first time, we thought that they are stored all together at the same servers, and so anyone with the physical access to the server will be able to decrypt all the data, but uh, that's not the case. Fortunately, the keys are stored <coughs> at, 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 at some other servers. Uh, we are still not sure about China. We try to trace where the actual data and where the keys are stored. We know, we know that the data is now stored for the Chinese iCloud accounts uh, only in China data centers. But about the keys, that was actually mixed news about that. Someone from Apple said that no, the keys all belong to us. Chinese government says that. Uh, we, we pushed Apple, and we also we now own the keys. So it's not really clear, and we weren't able to trace up to the last point where the, uh, the keys are actually stored. And now about data that is protected uh, more secure. Yeah, it is really more secure. And let's start with the iCloud keychain. That's, that's, that's probably the, that's a hidden gem. Uh, the, all your passwords are there. Most of the people, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll try to get first. Um, uh, the passwords are there, and the uh, the keys for some other data store store it in some some cloud key keychain sync uh, special servers. And to access the, uh, the cloud keychain, the login and password and the second factor are not enough. You will also need to to enroll the device to make it trusted, something like that, to go into the trusted circle, and only that way you'll be able to access the keychain data. And for that, you'll need to know the passcode of the, uh, one of the trusted devices. And there were also some, some changes to authentication tokens. Uh, that they, they are now short-lived. Uh, some time ago they lived, well, actually almost forever. Then the time was cut to 30 days, then for just 24 hours, and now sometimes they, they, uh, they leave for only, only one hour. Okay. Uh, where the data is actually stored. If you're curious, they are stored in Microsoft Azure storage at Google and Amazon AT, AT and t My data, for, uh, I'm located in Russia, and I have a Russian Apple ID. It is also stored at Google some, somewhere in Europe, I believe. Uh, there is a law in Russia that forces uh, all companies to store their personal data also in Russia, and it, it, it's a law for, for about three years, and Apple seemed to agree, but still the data is, is still not, not, not in Russia yet. Uh, I will probably skip that. You, you should already know how, how hackers uh, uh, get the password to access the account. The, the, the first item is phishing, of course. It's uh, obvious. You, know, you can reset password. You can put the keylogger on the device. And the last one is also really works. It's a rubber hose criminalizes. Okay, about two factor. Yes, you have. You need to access the iCloud data. You need one of the possible uh, second factors. You you need to access the trusted device. Uh, or uh, there, there is still an option to authenticate by SMS, and it, it, it seems to be always available. Uh, when I try to access the, the account, the push notification is being sent to all the devices, but now there is, it is also possible to switch to SMS. Okay. Uh, about tokens, oh, that, that, that's actually a huge, uh, huge topic. We, we have found how to extract the authentication tokens from PC and Mac computers 
if the computer is locked on into the cloud, you get the token that's binary data. We can decrypt it and then use that token to access all the, well, most of the iCloud data without password and without the second factor. Okay, some change. let's see how the tokens are stored. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't expect that it take so, so, so much time, about two-factor authentication as well. Yeah, there are two, two, two other special categories, uh, like messages, and they're protected, yes. Much better. Uh, to, to access messages stored in the iCloud, you first you need to access the uh, iCloud keychain first. And the, in the iCloud keychain, you can uh, find uh, the, the key that, that encrypts the other key stored in CCKKS storage and use that key to, to decrypt all the messages and also the message attachments. Um, so that's, that, that's not easy. Also, you should know that there are actually three modes of, of, um, of the keychain, and they all are working the different way. And actually, the more secure one is for the accounts with no two, two, uh, second factor and with a uh, no iCloud security code uh, uh, has been set up. Uh, in that case, the keychain data uh, will be synced directly uh, across the devices, but not through the... Uh, iCloud itself, so we will not be able to get the iCloud keychain. Okay, here is here is an example of the software that that is downloading the iCloud keychain. Uh, we we only need to select one of the trusted devices. You you see that I have many, and some of them are actually old and not connected anymore to the account. And we know the password length for for iOS devices. And anyone should work. We pretend to be the trusted device, and we authenticate, and we get complete access to, to the cloud data. Here is a part of, of the data downloaded from the iCloud keychain. Apple actually says that the iCloud keychain contains only passwords and nothing else. This is not true. Uh, the, the last tab is the, about tokens, and you can see that there are a lot of tokens for Facebook, for Twitter, for WhatsApp for several other sites like LinkedIn. So once you get access to the cloud keychain, you, you basically get access to, to everything, to all the other accounts. Okay, about screen time, new iOS 12 feature. It also can sync with the cloud, and it is also protected about the same way as message. Uh, we, and that data cannot be obtained from, the, uh, from backup, but only direct, directly from the cloud and it is not saved when you change the device and restore. And so it's a good idea to save it in the cloud, and we are still working on that. That's one of the biggest challenges we ever had, because there is no jailbreak for us 12 yet. Uh, about health, I know that my time is over. Oh, there is no sound. Hey, Pedro, you promised that there will be sound there. Oh, no sound. That, that's actually part of the uh, presentation in September with the uh, announcement of new Apple Watches, and they were talking about the privacy, saying that the health data is stored, is always encrypted on the device and the cloud. And it's a pity that we cannot hear the sound. Uh, anyway, you'll get a copy of the presentation and, and share that. Um, Apple says that all the data is, is securely encrypted, and it, it should be peer-to-peer -peer encrypted, as we have seen on the other side. But on another article, uh, it says that Apple does store the health data. Uh, both is true. There are two containers related to Apple Health. One is secure, and the second is not really secure. The secure one is like the messages stored in the cloud, and so you need to access the iCloud keychain first. And the other one is open to anyone who has the authentication token and don't, don't even need the, uh, the, uh, the passcode from the device. And also, there are uh, really important uh, security risks related to 2FA. I should say that the device with 2FA and the passcode um, uh, it might be not really as, as secure uh, as, you, as you think, um, uh, speaking on the iCloud. If someone will get access to your device and know the passcode, he can do everything about your iCloud account without the, uh, knowing your actual iCloud password, even, even change the password and add his own trusted, uh, trusted phone number. 
That's the links you'll get in the presentation, the further reading, explaining everything about the keychains, security and encryption in the iCloud. Whew, that's it, sorry. Oh, <laughs> 30 minutes, exactly. 